Welcome to True Health Tuesday. And the truth will set you free. What's interesting is that is true. Okay, now we're going to talk about thyroid adrenal fatigue because you're going to hear this a lot. I mean, almost every um, site around because of what we're going through. Uh, on the censored information uh, part, because we're going to divide this up into two, like we have had to do the last year because they, they're wiping everybody out. Um, we put stuff that I think will get by the, the censors, um, because now that we're living in a communist dictatorship, um, the censors are controlling the information that you receive. So that will be on the public social media and then the information that I think you really need um, that's reference data from the CDC because they will censor the CDC is on the D Dr. BVIP site. So I encourage you to get there. Um, this way you can get the handouts. Handouts, which is really, really cool. Okay, this is a good one. And one of our new docs was asking for a handout that talked about um, the current um, forced medical procedure without informed consent. Uh, <laughs> okay, I said it without saying it. Okay, okay, that's a good one. And then this is what to do to prevent any damage from said process or procedure that's going to be forced on you. It's also going to be, are, are we on Extreme Health Academy yet? Live? Not yet. Okay, but we will be. We will be. It will, so this way it'll be uninterrupted if you watched on Dr. B, VIP, or not. So let's get into the thyroid. Okay, because we're talking almost everybody that's had um, a physical, chemical, emotional stress, particularly if you're living in America now, you're going to have, have a response to that. The most frustrating thing is that doctors are missing it. And this is, this is pretty much what, what, when I'm doing a history on a patient, you know, they'll, they'll write down, you know, um, anxiety or stress or poor bowel movements or constipation or back pain, neck pain or sexual dysfunction, or, you know, I mean, anything that they're going to write down. And I'll do something crazy. I'll say, what do you think caused it? And you know what? Sometimes they say, I don't know. It runs in my family. Okay? The doctor told me, and that's the most common response. What do you think caused this? Well, the doctor told me, no, we're not going to abdicate authority for our health any longer. You're going to take responsibility for it. Now, now here, but the travesty is, the medical system isn't put in place to have you appreciate that those symptoms are there for a reason. Okay, that there's actually a reason that your body's doing this. So at 25 years old, this gal was diagnosed with low, low thyroid. Okay, so they started to run thyroxin. And this is, have you heard it a thousand times? Yes. I know. Sarah's back there going, oh, God, yeah. <laughs> this is the same scenario. So why would the thyroid be low? Well, you're going to learn tonight that there's a balance between the thyroid and the adrenals. There's a balance between the autonomic nervous system, sympathetic, which means fight or flight, parasympathetic, which is rest and digest. So if you have somebody with a low-functioning thyroid, could be nutrient deficiency, could be chronic stress, could be a, a um, physical, chemical, emotional stress. It could be some environmental toxins that are causing it. Something. But there's a reason. There's a reason for this. And what I mean by that is it's not lack of medication is never the reason. There's going to be something else. But critical thinking is sadly lacking in the medical world. It's sadly lacking in everybody's world. I mean, you know, you know, I got to put the mask on while I walk to a restaurant. Then I sit down and I take the mask off. Then I stand up and I put it on and I go to the bathroom. Then I take it off. I mean, come on, you know. Now, at 35, she had the gall gallbladder removed. So why would that happen? Well, you figure 25, we know inflammation, nutrient deficiencies, or stress. Guess what gallstones are from? Okay, when you look at them under, under a microscope, and gallstones are really light and big, they have similar crystal formation to cortisol, adrenaline, everything, and it's in the gallstones or formation are associated with chronic stress. And so if you've had a gallbladder removed at 35, heck, you were showing signs of stress at 25. So why didn't anyone ever look at this stress or do an in-depth study on this? Fibroids, hysterectomy. So people will say, well, I had a hysterectomy. And again, I'll ask the crazy question, why? Was it bleeding or fibroids? Because if it's bleeding, 
then you're looking at an acute end response to either physical stress or a chemical assault. If fibroids are there, you're looking at more of a chronic assault where the body's walling off toxins. And then breast cancer and mastectomy. Now, what I'll ask is what side? 85% of all breast cancers are on the left. That's because lymph drainage for the gut drains the upper left quadrant. Now, that, does that mean that we're being poisoned, that there's environmental toxins that you can consume that coalesce into the body's response of walling it off? Yeah, could be, could be. It just, this stuff requires a little more in-depth. And if you say it runs in my family, um, you might have similar dietetic um, stressors. Okay, you know, if, you're, if your dad ate, you know, bologna, you're going to eat bologna, okay? But, but let's look at it a little, bit, a little bit more in depth. Now, on these drug studies, okay, because that's, that's pretty much the system that we have nowadays, if there's a symptom, you get a, for every pill, or for every ill, there's a pill. Now, this is way back in 2003, but this was the worldwide vice president of genetics at GlaxoSmithKline. The vast majority of drugs, more than 90%, work only 30 to 50% of the people. I wouldn't say that most drugs don't work. I'd say that most drugs work in 30 to 50% of the people. Now, this list goes on to state the Alzheimer's drugs work around 30% of the time. Because just think about it. Again, we're, we're trying to bring common sense back into our society. If I give everybody here one drug, are we going to have the same response? No. Some people have a big response, a little response, no response. Some people will throw up. Some people will have whatever the drug was supposed to do. And you're looking between 30 and 50%. So, so is it ever drug deficiency? Well, not really. And then we have our society talking about hypothyroidism. Okay, hypo means low functioning. Hyper means high or, or over functioning. Now, <laughs> hypothyroidism results from the thyroid gland failing to produce enough hormones. Hypothyroidism may be due to a number of factors, including autoimmune disease. The most, common is, uh, thyro uh, the most common cause of hyperthyroidism is an autoimmune disorder called Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Cool. So we know the most common cause of low-functioning thyroid, it's Hashimoto's. Now, if you're not critical thinking, you just stop thinking there. Okay, turn the page. If you are critical thinking, you might think, well, what causes Hashimoto's? Okay. Um, Doctors aren't sure why the immune system, which is supposed to defend the body from harmful viruses and bacteria, sometimes turn against the body healthy tissues. Well, if you're not sure, how about doing a little bit more in-depth study? Would that make sense? Now, now, if we talk about thyroid and adrenals, and you got a guy saying, look, it's probably from nutrition deficiency. Um, it could be from chronic stress, physical, chemical, emotional stress. Or it could be from environmental toxins but it requires a critical thinking. Would that make sense? And, and when you're talking about thyroid, yeah, maybe. What about cancer? Let's look at this one. Immunity over inability, spontaneous regression of cancer. Whoa! You might think, hey, wait, I used to be really scared of cancer. The spontaneous healing of cancer is a phenomenon that's been observed for hundreds and thousands of years after having been the subject of many controversies is now accepted as an indisputable fact. The word spontaneous means without apparent cause, and regression is defined as a decrease in the size of tumor or the extent of cancer in the body, according to the National Cancer Institute. Spontaneous regression occurs in most types of cancers and was recorded in medical literature as early as 1742. So the body formed the cancer, okay, because what does cancer look like outside of the body? You don't know. What color is it? What shape is it? How much does it weigh? No, so does that mean cancer is really an adaptation to a toxic and deficient environment? Possibly, could be. But if the body can form it and eliminate it, does that mean that the immune system has changed in somewhat positive effect? Yes? Yeah. Okay, now, uh, the standard definition of spontaneous regression is the partial or complete disappearance of a malignant tumor in the absence of treatment or the presence of therapy considered inadequate to exert a significant influence on the disease. Spontaneous regression of cancer is not a rare occurrence, as thought to be in an average month during 2002. Medical journals published more than four articles on the subject, the average month. So the body's immune system to reverse cancer is common. 
Now, normally, but I've, I've been told that yelling, when I yell and I go, ah, like that, it blows out people's ears, so I'm not going to do it. But imagine if we had something scary. Wait, what does that stand below that picture? Okay, that's really scary. Okay, I mean, really scary. So if you think about this, okay, and I'm not talking about just limiting your social interaction, eliminating church, diagnosing you, whether you're essential or not essential. Let me tell you, everybody here is essential, okay? And when you're under stress, and this could be any, any type of stress, it could be physical stress, chemical stress, emotional stress, your body responds in a certain set fashion, okay? You got to run away from danger. So blood opens up to the arms and legs. Where does it come from? The gut. So digestion is shut down under stress. Heart rate elevates, blood glucose elevates, the liver starts breaking glycogen out of glucose, and this is normal. This isn't pathology. So if somebody's diagnosed with high blood pressure, like we talked about last week, high blood sugar, high cholesterol, are they experiencing a disease or is this a stress response? It's a stress response. So let's look at other stressors because when you know that you have an automatic nervous system, one part keeps you alive under stress and that's fight or flight or sympathetic, the other part regenerates tissue, that's parasympathetic or rest, digest, and repair. The thyroid and adrenals follow the same pattern. So when you're in a sympathetic dominant state, those adrenal glands are firing off. They're going to produce adrenaline, cortisol, all the stress hormones, and they're designed to do that. And then the other hormones, the thyroid, is going to be suppressed because you need to have a um, relaxed environment for a normal metabolic response. But under stress, by gosh, you're going to survive on that day. Cortisol is a natural, it's one of the most beautiful anti-inflammatories that your adrenal glands make. Now think of this, the adrenal glands are the pharmacy of the body. You've got blood filters and they're about the size of your fist, they're called kidneys. Now if you've got a blood filter, you've got six quarts of blood, every 20 minutes got to be filtered through this, th this filter the size of a fist. Wouldn't it be cool to put a pharmacy on top of that? so that you could get instant access of all these hormones into the bloodstream? I know, I know, you wanna say it with me. Wow, what a random design. No, it's called intelligent. Okay, although that'll be, that'll be wiped out by the sensor in the next year or so, this keeps going on. Okay, so you can't say intelligent design, okay, and I'm looking for the right pronoun for this. So cortisol um, decreases thyroid stimulating hormone. So cortisol is amazing, but chronic cortisol, you're looking at belly, seat, and thigh weight distribution. So if you see people like this, and we get patients coming in here saying, doc, you know, I just can't lose weight. I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm dieting. Yeah, dude, you got a belly, seat, and thigh, okay? That's cortisol-mediated metabolic state. That means you're in a chronic state of stress. And so how does this work? We've got the HPA axis, hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. And so the hypothalamus is one of those organs that has one foot in the endocrine system or the hormone system, one foot in the nervous system. And so all this information comes up from the spine. Now that's a picture on the right of the brain and spinal cord. So that means if you have a deviation or an alteration in the communication to that brain, you're gonna have an adaptation to that influence, to that information, okay? Like if I stand on your foot right now, will the heart rate go up? Okay, you know, I got some patients say, I don't know, I'm not a doctor. Okay, imagine if I drove a nail through your foot, would your heart rate go up? Well, I don't know, maybe. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. So, so, so understand that the stimulus into that brain is going to tell your brain how to respond, but you got to interpret it correctly. So you need a clear pathway for that. Otherwise, if you have um, an abnormal signal misinterpreted by the body, have you ever heard of an anaphylactic shock? Have you ever heard of, of, of the, you know, a massive cytokine storm? So these are misinterpretations of the body or, or abnormal adaptations. So if we look at every action of the body, that means a low-functioning thyroid, high-functioning thyroid, adrenal fatigue, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, type 2 diabetes, inflammatory bowel disease, and cancers, if we look at those as not diseases, but really adaptations to a toxic and stressed environment, then it makes sense, okay? So, and I love this. This negative and positive feedback system regulates the physiologic mechanisms of stress reactions, 
that's blood pressure, cholesterol, um, uh, blood sugar, immunity, and fertility. When I was a kid, and I, I know this is way back when, um, they, had a, they, they were doing everything they could to stop pregnancies because that was the era of free love, dude. Okay? Now there are fertility clinics everywhere. So we know that the stressed population isn't really fertile. This is, a, this is an old, old, old um, patient up here, 55 years old. I know, you're thinking that people didn't live that long? No, no, they do. Okay, now you can see the picture on the left, lots of physical stress. So what we're looking at is that physical stress is communicating to the hypothalamus. Is it communicating that the body is under a stress state? Yeah, probably. So what do you think is going to happen to her? Do you think she's going to have good diaphragmatic function? Think her blood sugar is going to be really good? Do you think she's sleeping through the night really good? Waking up refreshed, has three bowel movements a day? Or do you think she is in a completely stressed state with elevations in blood sugar, blood pressure, cholesterol, low functioning thyroid? If this, if this stress state has gone on for years, is she going to be misdiagnosed with a hypofunctioning thyroid? Yes or yes? Absolutely. Then she goes to the brilliant nature path, okay? And he says, wow, you have adrenal fatigue. And her best friend says, yes, I used to take a bunch of iodine, a bunch of this, a bunch of that to get, to get through that adrenal fatigue. My adrenals are just shot. Have you ever heard that? I do all the time. And I say, no, your adrenals are responding correctly based on the environment. Okay. Oh, my thyroid is just shot. It runs on my family. No, it doesn't. Your design has been here for between 60,000 and a million years. It really depends on what data you're looking at. Now, so if you're diagnosed with a low-functioning thyroid, which really means chronic stress state of physical, chemical, or emotional stress, or environmental toxicities, that's what it actually means. So if a doctor, well-meaning, gives you a thyroxine, okay, and that's kind of like T4, kind of like not really. So some organs are going to recognize that some aren't. Because remember, your thyroid produces the right hormone in the right amount at the right time. Popping a pill every day doesn't do that. So you're going to get an abnormal response. Now, thyroxine is not the thyroid hormone. Thy the thyroid gland normally produces T3. It decreases production in the presence of thyroxine. That makes sense. Because remember, what tells the pituitary to work? You got the hypothalamus. And if you have this synthetic hormone kind of floating around in your system or synthetic drug that mimics one of your hormones, then it's going to be hard for that hypothalamus to tell the pituitary to secrete the thyroid stimulating hormone to get the thyroid to work right. Does that make sense? It does. And plus, do you know anyone that's suffering from a lack of thyroxine? Maybe somebody if they've had radiation exposure or removed it, but even then I wouldn't recommend it. If you've had your thyroid removed, and we did a couple of series on the thyroids, okay, that if you've had it removed, you have to get the, the nature's thyroid you got to get the, the armor thyroid where, where it's the complete ground up pig thyroid. Okay, because you need the calcitonin, you need everything. But if you have a low functioning thyroid and they're trying to fix it with this, thyroxin often acts as an anti-thyroid hormone. Isn't that interesting? But is it addressing the underlying cause? No. Now, when we look at it, and, and again, let's look at how this thing works. Okay, you got the thyroid that's producing um, T3, T4. It also produces a bunch of other stuff. But let's just look at this stuff. Now, T4, you got about 20 times the amount of T3. But T3 is the active version. So that T4 has got to be carried over by a, a thyroid binding globulin. So it's, it's on a protein. And then this has to go to the intestinal tract, the liver, kidneys, lungs. And this is where it gets converted to that active form of T3. Now, what would happen if somebody's under stress? Do you have good blood supply going to the kidneys or liver or lungs? Lungs, yeah, if you're in a stressed state. Kidneys, yeah, if your blood pressure goes up, there's going to be more flowing to it. But the intestines, what happens if it goes to the intestines and you're under a stressed state? you got decreased nerve supply to that. Now, all this stuff is bound on a protein. Let's say that you've had chronic stress. Do you have enough available amino acids in order to carry that thyroid binding globulin over to move that T3 and T4 around? No. Again, I'm talking about, and there, there's still some people in this audience that, that are old enough to remember, it's called critical thinking and common sense. I know. Wow! 
never even thought of that. In medicine, yes. Okay, so look at this. So why would it be off? Just ask the question, why? And if, you're, if your doctor says it runs in your family, you fire him. It's okay. When we have complete socialized medicine, you won't, need to, you won't be able to do that. But right now, we can. Now, dietary selenium. Selenium, that's a mineral. Where do you get it? Well, you've got to have stomach acid in order to absorb it. So if you're taking these supplements and you're not being able to get it uh, to, to utilize because you have low stomach acid, or if you're taking an antacid, could an antacid lead to hypothyroidism? Yes, absolutely. Why? Because you get low stomach acid, you can't absorb the minerals. And then, so we look at it, causes a hypothyroidism. I'm sorry, what was that click, clip from the Mayo Clinic? Hashimoto's. Let's look at this. Might have a little bit more detailed information. Nutrient deficiencies, heavy metal exposure, adrenal stress. That makes sense. Enzyme deficiencies. That makes sense. All enzymes are proteins, and if you're in a stress state, you're not going to uh, break them down. Chronic Ill illness, PUFAs, which is polyunsaturated fatty acids. Canola oil, soy, vegetable oil, sapphire, or sunflower, or walnut, processed food, additives. So what I like to look at is the thyroid is like the canary in the coal mine. Okay, if you got some type of problem, if you have low energy, if you have, because what, what the doctors typically will do is they'll look for TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone. If that's high and that's pr produced by the pituitary and T3, T4 is low, it means the pituitary is screaming down to the thyroid and the thyroid's not working. Okay, now if the T3 and T4 are high and the TSH is low, it means the thyroid is producing this stuff and the pituitary is saying, look, you don't need it that much. Okay, so we have the hyper hypo. But no one's looking at what's causing the pituitary to do that. What's causing it? Could it be nutrition deficiencies? Could it be some type of chronic stress? Could it be an adaptive response? What's causing it? Okay, that's what we're going to get into. Because when you look, the canary in the coal mine, the thyroid is going to... Like if you have low, low energy, if your hair starts falling out, okay, if, if you, there's some other, one of the conditions that are associated with an abnormal functioning thyroid, don't just think it's from lack of thyroxin, okay? That doesn't make sense. Let's do some critical thinking. Now, the adrenal glands, the adrenals are the pharmacy of the body. They produce every glucocorticosteroid, minocorticosteroid, and stex hormone. That means that if you've had um, a hysterectomy, okay, then the adrenal glands are going to take over. you got a redundant system. It works, okay? Adrenals are going to produce estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, fights cancer, produces interferon. I mean, these freaking guys are amazing. Now, the weird thing is you're not going to notice any clinical effects if up to 90%, you get 89% destroyed, those guys can still work, and you have two of them. You can even remove a kidney, donate it to somebody, and your, your adrenal glands are still going to work. I mean, it's, a, it's amazing. Now, what causes the adrenals to, to produce cortisol? It's usually an inflammatory process. It's also an antioxidant. So cortisol is amazing. But the things that will raise cortisol, cortisol levels are alcohol, drugs, toxic foods, environment, and stress. So when somebody does that swab inside to check your cortisol levels, are they asking in detail, how many bowel movements a day do you get? You know, what, what, what's your skin like? Do you have any rashes? What, what's eczema, psoriasis? Those are indicating that you have low stomach acid. So you got to do some, some more detailed in-depth in, investigation. Progesterone produced by the, by the adrenal glands protects you from cancer, infection, and autoimmune disorder. Protects you from cancer. Didn't I start this off by talking about cancer? Okay, I know you're thinking I've got Alzheimer's. No, I'm not that old. Okay, settle in. <laughs> okay, so, so you look at this, cancer. So if you have a presentation of a disease, wouldn't it be cool to do a little bit more critical thinking and to find out where that stressor is? What's causing the decreased progesterone, okay? Is it from my cholesterol-lowering medications? Because guess what, your body, produces all of these things. What does it produce? The glucocorticosteroids, the minocorticosteroids, the sex hormones. What do your adrenal glands need to make? What's the raw material they got to make this stuff out of? It's cholesterol. So now let's do some more critical thinking. Let's say 
that you're utilizing medical care for health. <laughs> okay, for emergency, fantastic. But if you're utilizing those guys for health, you're in deep trouble. Okay, they don't have a good record. So let's say you go there and they say, man, you have high cholesterol. Okay, cool. Why? What's causing it? Is there a defect in the liver? Are you just defective? Your body is breaking down and you're producing stuff that you don't require? Or is the, and then again, that's the thinking of, of a doctor who's not going to critical think and just give you a medication to lower it. He's not going to ask, think, or why it could be there. Okay, it's just, I'm working with a, with a clinic system that if you have this level, I give you this, and that's my standard of care. No critical thinking involved. You don't need to think for yourself, okay? However, if you do have physical, chemical, or emotional stress, your body is going to respond correctly. So is cancer an end result of a toxic, deficient stress? Is adrenal fatigue the end result of a toxic, deficient stress? Is hypothyroid toxic, deficient stress? Absolutely. So, so the body is responding correctly. So now you look at this, and this is going to be hugely important. What lowers thyroid function? Estrogen, high cortisol, liver toxicity, fluoride, pesticides, stress, toxic food, medications, and vaccines. Okay. What helps the thyroid? Healthy gut function, low cortisol, healthy food, healthy water, low stress. It can't be that easy. Well, what lowers cortisol? Healthy thyroid, vegetables, healthy water. What raises cortisol? Low thyroid, inflammation, stress, tissue damage, vaccines, and toxic food. So does that mean that the body is responding correctly based on the stimulus? Wow. Again, that's that critical thinking. And we're developing a medical system that doesn't allow that. Okay, you're going to get some really sharp docs, but, but it, it really, you need to have a doctor that is critically thinking. And in fact, the, the medical system now, they're in deep trouble. They can't, they can't recommend stuff that's not in their standards of care. They're not going to go in and say, look, man, we got to get a full body x-ray and I'm going to refer you to this corrective chiropractor to change that stimulus from the hypothalamus to the pituitary so, so we can get your adrenals to function correctly. I'm really suspecting that hypothalamus isn't working right. I mean, a corrective chiropractor will talk that way. But will the medical system tell you that? Huffington Post, 2017, 60 million Americans, mostly women, have some type of thyroid. Anxiety, achiness, muscle weakness, fatigue, um, weight fluctuations, hair loss, temperature sensitivity, constipation. I know what you're thinking. Why do we even need to look into the thyroid when we have medications for all of these? Thank goodness. Somebody was raised in a sarcastic environment. Okay, so cortisol, short-term, vital, keeps you alive. Long-term, will kill you. Why does that mean? Because your body's designed to handle, you've got all these responses to deal with stressors, and you do it really, really well. Okay, but long-term, under stress, you can only be in that fight or flight so long, then your body begins to break down. That's, that's fact. That's how human beings work. So short-term, you're looking at a fat, protein, carbohydrate metabolism, immune system response, blood pressure, it normalizes. It's amazing. But under chronic stress, look at the diseases here. Low thyroid, blood sugar imbalances, that's type 2 diabetes, decreased bone density, that's osteoporosis, sleep disruption. What is, happens when sleep gets disturbed? You're talking anxiety, stress, depression, uh, decreased muscle mass, elevations in blood pressure, lowered immune system function, autoimmune diseases. Slow wound healing, increased abdominal fat, depression, lupus, migraines, MS, all. I mean, it's mind-blowing. These are not healthy animals. Okay, they are not. And in fact, the kids today, I just saw a thing on, on Instagram of schools in Hawaii that are going through with these, these kids today, and we're going to talk about them in the censor portion, that they're forced to be afraid of each other. They can't play. They're eliminating recess. They're eliminating sports. What kind of psychological damage is this doing to the kids? And what is their risk? Again, those are questions that involve critical thinking and common sense. Okay, you're not going to get that on the standard news. Now, if you look at enriched flour, enriched flour, the iron in there, the iron-enriched flour is typically magnetic. So if you want to, just for the heck of it, 
you know, put some, some enriched flour products in a bowl, water, okay, and put a magnet on there and you'll actually see they, they move, okay? And because that type of enriched, what they're doing is they're removing the healthy nutrients out of healthy grains, the, the, the digestive and metabolic enzymes, so it has a longer shelf life. And so since this can be toxic to you, they add nutrients in there that look really good from a chemist, but your body can't really recognize it. Interesting, they used to use fluoride to reduce your thyroid function. Interesting. I know what you're thinking. Don't! Okay, because don't we fluoridate water? Yes, in some counties in this country, we do fluoridate water. And so the theory is that fluoride's mixed in there. Yeah, I know it's a neurotoxin. Okay, and I know it can damage the thyroid, and I know it can increase your cancer risk. Okay, but, but while you're drinking it, as it passes by your teeth, that fluoride may protect from cavities. <laughs> no, seriously. Okay, it's insane. Insane. So a 12-ounce Coke, okay, has enough fluoride in there to exceed the optimal dose by 233%. That's a Coke. Okay, so the fluoride used as an anti-thyroid treatment began in the 1800s. Um, fluoride ingestion was linked to goiter up in the 70s. Europe, um, uh, scientists in Europe prescribed fluoride to reduce basal metabolic rate in patients with an overactive thyroid. Just two to three milligrams is sufficient. Did you know Dole Pineapple, Snapple, Coke, Hansen's, Minute Maid Orange Juice, Gerber Strawberry for Babies, Amstel Light Beer, good God, I thought beer was safe. Okay, so, so you look at this and you think, wait a second, these drugs, so why are 60 million Americans diagnosed with a low-functioning thyroid? Could it be environmental toxins? Yeah. So what do you need? The thyroid needs iodine. Now, iodine, just like that table of elements like back in high school that, you know, only the crazy guys memorized it. How many people? I know you probably did too. <laughs> So it's a halide. So the iodine, bromine, chlorine, and fluoride are all in that category. So there are similar structures. So if you're nutrient deficient in iodine, but you have exposure to chlorine because the water's chlorinated, or fluoride because the you know, toothpaste and water is fluoridated, okay, or bromine, and that's, that's a, a raising agent in the, in the baking products. We used to use iodine for that, but you know, I mean, in Europe, they, they banned it in uh, 1990, in Canada in 1994 but we're still using it here. And the reason this is important, it's in plastic, pesticides, hot tub treatment, and fire retardants. If you see the blue garb that people are wearing over their nose and mouth now, the blue ones, the disposable ones, those typically have fire retardants in there. So will this negatively affect the thyroid? Absolutely. Leaky gut also, anything that damages the intestinal tract will cause yeast and funguses to, to, to grow and they can bore holes in the intestinal tract. This is why when the, the doctors originally say, we don't know what causes Hashimoto's. Okay, Hashimoto's is not a hypo and it's not a hyper, it's both. Now, why would that happen? Because when you eat something and you get an undigested piece of protein inside of the bloodstream, that the, the piece of protein that's not tempered by digestion, your immune system recognizes that as a problem. And so it's going to build antibodies to it. So if you take gluten and casins, okay, your body can build antibodies towards that that can actually attack the thyroid. This is why when the antibody levels go down, your thyroid bounces back up when antibody levels go up because you're consuming it and it's getting into the undigested area, then your thyroid's going to go down. So, so you get that hyper and hypo. So is a leaky gut important? Huge. Soy. Okay. I know they're the Great Reset is telling you you're never going to eat meat except for like a treat and everything's going to be soy-based. Um, what happens? The whole soy story. I encourage you to read this book. Um, malnutrition, digestive disorders, immune system breakdown, thyroid dysfunction. Okay, hugely important. Um, infants fed soy formula. Take an estimated of five birth control pills a day worth of estrogen. Okay. Soy that's tempered by fermentation is okay. Soy that's not is not good for you. Then we have estrogen producing. Remember, progesterone protects from cancer. Estrogen is not good for you. Now, I mean, you need that balance, okay? If you're a girl and you're planning on having kids or nursing, you need that balance of estrogen and progesterones. 
but est excess estrogens, fibroids, endometriosis, low thyroid. So does that, because fat becomes its own um, hormone producing organ. Foaming agents, hormones in meat, cosmetics, birth control pills, spermicides, pesticides, all of these things elevate estrogens. Now progesterone is amazing. It protects against the catabolic effects of cortisol. Progesterone can instantly activate the thyroid. Cholesterol is converted to pregnenolone and progesterone by the ovaries, adrenals, and brain. Yeah, okay. And when I think of women, I think of like this, because I was raised with a super powerful mom. Okay, I don't know what her um, pronoun is. Um, good, I'm glad, thanks. Okay, omega-3 to 6 ratio. <laughs> so when you look at this, 1 to 1, 3 to 1 is normal. Okay, the problem is disease starts at around 8 to 1. American diet is like 20 to 1. So no wonder we're the sickest animal species. And this is because we're doing so many toxic polyunsaturated fats. Juicing is a good way to start cleaning up the blood. Why? Because you're in a stress state. If you've had a low-functioning thyroid or adrenal fatigue, you're in a stress state. That means you can't break down the nutrients. So doing this, juicing, pre-digest it. Cleansing herbs like stinging nettle, burdock root will help. Uh, high antioxidant fruit, that's berries, um, beets, seaweed, lemon juice, spinach, amazing for the kidney. Stress hormones, the antidote to cortisol is B3 or niacin. We use niacin for our people with anxiety, stress, depression. Look at um, orthomolecular psychiatry. Great, great method started by, by Linus Pauling and a friend of his. Um, niacin protocol is amazing to help with, with stress. Chlorella, spirulina, fantastic for detoxing. So the solution to healthy thyroid and adrenals, it's going to sound too simple. Drink more healthy water, eat more organic veggies, reduce, find out why you're taking the medications, and find a doctor that will critically think and figure out what's the, what's the stressor, okay, or what's the adaptation. Eliminate refined foods and rich foods, eliminate envirotoxins, and deal with stress. And there's only three. You got physical, chemical, and emotional. What are the causes? Standard American diet, medication use, refined environmental toxins, and unhealthy stress. I mean, it, it, it seems too simple and too glib, but to assess the physical stress, you need to find a corrective chiropractor that's going to look at the structure. You need full body thermography, if you can get it, to identify the chemical stressors. If you did a live blood cell analysis, you'd, you'd identify the health of the blood. I mean, there's ways to look at the stress, objective analysis to show that you are under stress and objective analysis to show that you're correcting the stress. Can't be that easy. Now, the next part of this we're gonna go into, I, I feel that the information is too controversial that we would, on the anti-social media, I mean, social media, that we would be knocked out, okay? So, um, hopefully this, this will go, but I imagine when, when, when the men that were producing, the, the founders of the Constitution, they, they felt that you had certain rights that could never be separated from you, ever, um, until now. Give me liberty or give me death unless there's a virus with 99% recovery rate, in which case strips me of my freedoms, my job, my constitutional rights, and puts me under house arrest. Yeah, we're going to take that back. Okay.